All right. All right. Uh, we're going to get started in 10 minutes. Welcome to the uh, webinar, our monthly webinar here in Chemist's Corner. I'm Harry Romanowski, and I've got a little hair out of place there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we'll get started in uh, at the top of the hour in just nine minutes from now. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So if you have a question right now, feel free to post it. Um, if you look under this video, you should see a question section. So you can post your uh, email and your question. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. This is a, a, a lengthy webinar, but uh, I'd be happy to. Um, let's just see what we have here. Uh, let's see. Chels uh, has a question. Uh, great, I'll get to that question in a bit. Uh, but if you're just joining now, feel free to uh, post on here. Let me know where you're from. Um, just say howdy. I'm I'm located in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States. Um, it's kind of my home base, but uh, uh, we have people from around the world. All right, we'll get started in just eight more minutes. So if you have a quick question before we get started, feel free to post it below. And meanwhile, I'm just getting set up here. Get a little, little tea. Um, my props over here. You never know about these uh, technologies and whether things are going to work or not. So I'm, I'm always happy when it does. Few extra tests here. It says we're live, so I'm assuming that it's working. So if you want to just say howdy, let me know where you're from, who you are, and uh, give me a shout out here. Uh, you can just type in below that uh, question there. Hi, this is the uh, monthly webinar. We'll get started in five minutes. Uh, but if you have a question or if you want to just say howdy, feel free to post it below the video here. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, and let me know uh, if you have any kind of question. I'll be taking doing, doing questions after the webinar. But uh, if you have something early, maybe I could just answer early here. Hello, Chelsea. Yes, this really is live. Chelsea asked, if, is this really live? This is live. Uh, no recording for me. I haven't figured out how to do recordings. So, so we get live, Perry, uh, in all its glory, really. I'll probably stumble, make a few mistakes, but uh, hopefully that doesn't get in the way of you, uh, uh, you learning and helping you to, uh, you know, essentially launch your own product. All right, uh, we got to got the notice went out that that we're going live, so we'll get started in just five minutes. So. Uh, we do have a question that come in here. question about a contract manufacturer and if we hire a contract manufacturer how do we 100% know our formula and processes um, you know that's that that is a challenge if we hire a contract manufacturer how do we protect our recipe from being swiped by the manufacturer 
those are those are great questions. Um, since I got a little time before we start, let me answer that question. So, uh, first of all, if you're hiring a contract manufacturer, um, unless you give them the formula, and um, you're not going to know 100% what your formula is. You got to understand these contract manufacturers. Um, they don't want you to go somewhere else and they don't want you to get price breaks. So what they don't want to tell you what the formula is. Um, so if you, um, if you give them the formula, you work with a cosmetic chemist to come up with what exactly the formula is, then of course you'll know what the formula is. Although I will say that they, the contract manufacturer might not tell you uh, who the suppliers of the ingredients were, but so you might even have to say who supplies these ingredients to, uh, anyway, you've got to work that out with your contract manufacturer. Um, just keep asking questions. Uh, and if you want to know hundred percent, the formula, you probably have to first work with a cosmetic chemist, or you'll have to pay the contract manufacturer some additional money to get access to that. But it's always a good idea as a brand owner to have a, your own, to know what your formulas are. Uh, as far as the, the contract manufacturer uh, taking your recipe, the reality is there's not a lot you can do to stop that. Um, they can make a little tweak to the formula that you give them and uh, take your formula. It's, it's, that's just reality. Now, the good part is, it takes more than just a formula to have a successful product line. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this webinar today. Just if you're just joining, uh, I am Perry Romanowski. I'm doing the webinar today about starting your own uh, cosmetic product line. Uh, we're gonna get started in just about two minutes, but now that you're here, why don't you uh, tell me, uh, Give me a little shout out. Where are you from? Say your name. Say hello. We've got Tom. How, how's it going, Tom? It's good to hear from you. Um, we've got a couple of uh, special bonuses for people joining this webinar. If you look in the bottom left corner there, you'll see some uh, some of the free bonuses we have or um, a few discounts on uh, various products. Uh, and I'll talk about them a bit in the webinar. So, um, We'll get started in just about two minutes. We've got Anna from the UK. Uh, Anna and Arena, hello. Welcome from the UK. It's good to hear from you. Uh, hopefully uh, you get inspired to get started with your own line here. Um, well, speaking of started, we'll get started in just two minutes. Feel free while you're waiting. If you have a question, feel free to uh, ask a question or if you uh, want to just say hello, let me know where you're from. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join. We've got Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Uh, North Carolina. Hello. Well, welcome. We've got people from all over the country, all over the world. Uh, if you hadn't known, I'm located in Chicago uh, in the United States. Another person from the UK. Hello. I, I, I guess I picked a good time so people from the UK could join. Uh, sometimes I never know when to schedule these webinars because of my location. We have some people even in Australia who can't really make it. But uh, usually I uh, record these things. Oh, another person from uh, Chicago. Hello, uh, Marat from Chicago. Uh, Shauna, Shauna from Illinois. Hello. Uh, welcome, everybody. I hope you uh, find this... Uh, Helpful, useful. Oh, we're getting a few people. Martyr from Latvia. Welcome, Latvia. Christine from New York. We got Emanuela from Boston. Oh, Emanuela, sorry. Uh, uh, and we got uh, from Philadelphia, from New York City. Hello, Madeline. Hello, Callie from New York City. Hello. Tracy from California. Wow. This is great. I, I love getting people from all over the country. All right. So it uh, looks like it's right at the top of the hour. So I like to be timely. So let's get started. Um, there you go. Let's get started. Um, 
I am Perry Romanowski, and this is our monthly webinar uh, about topics of cosmetic science. We do these through Chemist Corner. Today's webinar is going to be about starting your own product line. So there are a number of people who uh, follow Chemist Corner and work in cosmetics, and they say to themselves, hey, I should start a product line. <laughs> There's so many product lines, uh, but we're going to go through some ways in, in this uh, webinar, which will show you exactly how you start your own. Uh, so to get started, I just want to go through some housekeeping things. So below this video, you'll see below, there's uh, you can put your name. And if you have a question, feel free to post a question. I'll be answering questions after the main webinar, which is about the, the webinar will be about 45 minutes, depending on how I go. Um, but I'll, I'll answer questions after that. Uh, and if I don't get to your question, I'll answer it via email if you leave an email address. Also, for some free bonuses, you see uh, below this, we have um, we partnered with Valdata Systems today and to offer you a discount on their recipe manager software. Uh, it's really great software for uh, managing formulations, inventory, and making sure that uh, you have everything uh, properly put together from in terms of uh, the regulatory environment. So be sure to check out that. Just click on the link uh, on the, the left side of this video uh, where you can uh, check out that free bonus. Uh, additionally, uh, there are a couple of other coupon codes. Uh, I'll be talking about those things during the webinar. So why don't we uh, get started? So first I'll call up my uh, slides here. Go. And we'll get we'll get started uh, soon. Uh, all right, so I'm starting now. Ah, there we go. All right. You know, some professionals have their, their all their own people do all this stuff. But me, I have to do everything on my own. But that's okay. Uh, so just one second here. All right, there we go. Getting started here. All right. In this webinar, we're going to go over a number of different topics. So welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to go a brief overview of the process of launching a product. We'll uh, talk about learning who your customer is and how to connect with them. Then we'll look at some ways that you can come up with product ideas. Next, I'll talk about how to actually get your product made. We're going to cover ideas on how much it costs to start your line and where you might get funding. And then finally, we'll go into some tips on product distribution. So during the talk, I'm going to cover exactly how I address all of those aspects of product launching when I actually launched my own cosmetic line uh, called Feek. I'll talk about that in a bit more. Um, so you're going to learn exactly what I did. And at the end, I'll tell you about how you can join the cosmetic launch coach so you too can get on the path to starting your own product line. Now, it's a lot to cover in uh, 35 to 40 minutes, and I'll take questions after the webinar. Okay, so a little bit about me before we get started on the main topic. You know, I'll tell you some of the relevant experience that I've had in the cosmetic industry. Uh, my name is Perry Romanowski, and I've been a scientist in the cosmetic industry for over 25 years. So I was just actually making the products. Now, for most of that time, I was a formulator of both hair and skin care products. And I've been teaching uh, continuing education courses about formulation and about cosmetic product development. I've written a few books, uh, including Beginning Cosmetic Chemistry, uh, and then a couple of books related to cosmetic products, uh, the, the Beauty Brains, Can You Get Hooked on Lip Balm. Um, I've also done a few TV spots, like on the Dr. Oz Show, on the Rachel Ray Show, just teaching people about cosmetics. So. Um, I've really been into this cosmetic industry. I created a, the Chemist Corner website and then a popular beauty blog called The Beauty Brains. We had a, a podcast and we just talked to people about uh, beauty products and answer questions about them. And really, we grew that Beauty Brains uh, website uh, and pretty large. We had a pretty large following. 
Uh, I've also been, I'm also the currently the uh, president of the Society of Cosmetic Chemists. So this is just to, to show you that I've been really steeped in this industry for a while. Uh, I've worked on some of the, here's some of the brands I've worked on, VO5, uh, Tresemme, Nexus. Um, so I really have gone through and I've created those formulas. Uh, I work all the paperwork. I go to the production batches and I see those and I help make the specs. So all the aspects of taking a formula from an idea all the way to uh, getting it on a store shelves, I've been involved with that. Of course, um, starting a cosmetic line, uh, it, it can be complicated, right? So just knowing how to create a product isn't enough to launch a line. As, as some of you might know, it's, it's easy enough to go in your kitchen and mix a few things together and say, hey, I've got a product, so now what do I do with it? Um, you, you really also have to know how to market your product, how to sell it, how to get all the regulatory work and the testing completed. You need to know about product distribution and everything else involved in running a beauty product business. Now to get that experience, I've worked with a number of entrepreneurs to help launch their lines, but even more significant, I actually started uh, this beauty brand myself. I'm going to touch on that uh, as I did throughout this webinar. All right, let's start with an overview of how you actually launch a beauty product line. Now, many people think that the process for starting a product line goes something like this. So you first, you come up with this great idea. Of course, you need, you need a great idea. And then you create your product or you get somebody else to make that product. And then you sit back and you just watch the money roll in, if only. Was that easy? Unfortunately, it's really not that easy. In fact, this system gets a number of things wrong. For example, when starting out on a product line, um, for example, when starting out with a product line, it's much more important to start out by figuring out who is your customer? Who's going to buy this product? Then you can find out what problems that do they have that you can actually solve. And then it's it's only after you understand the problems of your consumer that you can come up with products that they want. Another problem with this simple launch system is that you spend too much time figuring out how to make the product. If you wanna be a formulator and are curious about technology that goes into your product, then by all means, learn how to make formulas. But if you are serious about being a cosmetic brand owner, then you don't you won't really have time to work on developing your formulas. You'll need to spend the bulk of your time connecting with your consumers and marketing your product. If you're spending most of your time developing your products, then you're not spending time on the most important piece of your business, which is marketing and sales. I, I, as a cosmetic chemist, as a formulator, uh, is this was a tough realization for me to, to understand that focusing on the formula creating the greatest formula you could possibly can is really not a great way to build up a beauty brand. And finally, the idea that if you build it, they will come is just wrong. If you build it, you'll probably end up with a garage full of products that nobody's buying. You really have to focus on your marketing. Now, let's suppose you make the most perfect, best working product in the world. Imagine that everything about your product idea was realized and now you have exactly the product you want. Well, is that gonna mean you're, you'll be successful? Probably not, because there are hundreds of thousands of great working beauty products that never go anywhere. And there are lots of products that are just average or perform terribly that people continue to buy over and over. So you might be wondering, why is that, you know? And the difference is marketing. Although you need to create a product that performs well, it's only through the development of great marketing and sales that you'll be able to have a successful product line. Now, when launching a beauty product line, you have to focus on your product story and marketing. You know, lots of mediocre products out there are successful. So let's take a look at the So let's take a look at the more realistic launch process for starting your product line. Now here are the seven main steps to starting your product line. First, you identify the customer and the problems. 
Step two is you come up with an idea that solves those problems. Step three would be to test your ideas. Step four would to cre create your own product. Then step five is create your marketing. Step six, you wanna set up an online sales and distribution system. And then the seventh step is you drive customers to your online sites and then you repeat. So let's look at these in each in a bit more detail. So number one, who is your customer? As I said it before, a lot of people think that to launch a product line, the first thing you need to do is to come up with a good idea. This isn't the best strategy. The world is filled with products that may have been great ideas, but not enough people really wanted them. The first thing you need to do is figure out who is your potential customers. Now you might be thinking, well, everybody should be my customer, right? No. Everyone should not be your customer. In fact, if you go again, if you chase after everyone, uh, you're probably not going to get every, probably get anyone. Let the big guys like Procter and Gamble and L'Oreal let them chase after the bulk of consumers. You want to find a niche. In fact, when you are first starting out, you really want to appeal to a small consumer segment. You want to find a niche market for consumers who are dissatisfied with the current products on the market. The reality is that most people are perfectly happy buying products from Procter & Gamble or Unilever, and you won't be able to compete with these big companies for those cons consumers. They have more money and more resources than you. You really can't beat out the big companies if you go for the same consumers that they're going for. The only way to win is to go for consumers that most people are ignoring. You see, there are still a huge number of people who don't like products that are produced by the big guys. They want products that are designed specifically for them. And if you can figure out who those people are and what they want in their products, then you can create a successful product line. This type of marketing is called niche marketing. And for the small cosmetic entrepreneur, this is where you have to start. Here are some examples of some niche markets. We have bald men, we have women with curly hair, dark skinned women, light skinned women, pregnant women, men with pregnant wives, women who like to read comic books, religious people. Really, a niche group is any group of people who identify with certain characteristics or traits. So the first thing you need to do is find a group of niche consumers and then learn as much as you can about them. Who are they? Where are they? And then, then get into what are the beauty product problems that they want solved. Uh, before you even come up with your first idea, figure out what kind of products you're potential consumers want. Now, there are a number of ways to find potential customers and the internet makes it easy, uh, much easier than it used to be, of course. You can find them on blogs, on forums, through social media. And once you find them, you can get into a dialogue and ask them questions. Get as much information about your target niche market as you can. Now I'm going to show you about Feek. When we were when we were working on launching the Feek brand of hair care products, the first thing I did was to find a niche group of consumers. Now I've been writing a beauty blog for the last ten years, and I've been able to build a group of fans over that time. These are followers of my website. They're listeners to the podcast, and they follow my social media accounts. And you know, then I created this email list. I literally had a group of thousands of customers or at least potential customers uh, that I could reach out to. They made up what I called my niche of people interested in beauty products. And more importantly, I had a way to connect directly with them. So you have to find a way to connect with a consumer group. Okay, once you've figured out who your potential customers are gonna be, next you need to come up with some products that solve the problems that you're having. Uh, that, that they're having. So you can come up with any type of product that you want. Uh, but the reality is that you'll have much greater success if you start with something that is similar to things that are already on the market. If you create com something completely new, that's a lot harder to uh, be successful. For example, if you're starting a new body wash line, don't create a whole new body wash form. The idea of powdered body wash might sound interesting, 
But unless your consumers have told you that that's something you want, you want to stick with the standard body wash formula. Make something that is easy to put on, foams well, smells good, and rinses clean. And by all means, if you have some special technology that really does something different, uh, then make that product. But the less something is like products already on the market, the harder it's going to get for consumers to try and accept. You don't want to try to change people's behaviors. Now, you can come up with ideas by reviewing the information that people have told you uh, and then looking on the market for products that are designed to already solve that problem. Brainstorm ways to make uh, products that are already on the market uh, better. And once you can show a product, you can, once you can create a product that's better, then you have a chance to start your own line. Now, don't worry that somebody has already done your product idea. In fact, I say that's a good thing. You should really be worried if you can't find your product on the market, because that usually means one of two things. First, it's technically not possible to make that right now. There are some things that you can't do. Uh, you know, perms or perms still are going to use thioglycolate that smells terrible. It's a great idea to say, let me create a perm that doesn't smell bad. Uh, yeah, everybody wants to do that. Or let me create a shampoo that grows hair. Everybody wants to do that. The reason those products aren't on the market now is because it's technically not possible. The other problem if a product doesn't exist is that somebody tried it and it just wasn't a good business idea. Uh, there are products like that where you just can't make any money at that. And ultimately to stay in business and to be a business, you're going to have to be able to continue to sell product. Oh, but you can't just launch a successful product line simply by just copying what your competitors are doing. You really need to look at your competitors and figure out what they're doing right and then figure out how you can make improvements on that. You don't have to create a unique product. You just have to make one that is superior in some way over the competition. And you have to be better at communicating to your niche than anyone else in the market. Now, a few ways that you can make your product superior. Uh, you can do a performance improvement. That's pretty hard to do in the cosmetic line and beauty business. Uh, there are a lot of great products out there and there's not a lot of new technology. Now you can improve the experience. That's easier to do, uh, but it's still gonna be a challenge. You can provide better customer service experience. And this is something anybody can do. If you get orders, you know, pay attention to people and communicate with people and make sure that they're happy. You can come up with a more interesting story. There are a lot of beauty brands that are just based on great stories. And if you can come up with a great story for your product, that's a way to stand out. And of course, you can go for the lower cost version. For an entrepreneur starting out, this is probably the, the least desirable because you're gonna put into a lot of work. You should get a profit out of it and you should be able to make a living out of it. Um, you know, in, in, if, you, if you don't want to make any money, you can start a charity and that's different from what we're talking about here. So when thinking up your idea, figure out some way that your product will be superior and then make it that way. So how did I apply this to Feek? As I said, I had a great, uh, great niche group of people that I could ask questions. So before I came up with any ideas or even made a single product, I put together a questionnaire and then I sent it to my list. I received over a thousand responses with information about the hair problems that they had, the products that they used, what they liked, what they didn't like, and even how much money they were going to be willing to pay. Using this information, I discovered that most of the people in my group were interested in having a shampoo and conditioner and products that could fight frizz, make hair feel less dry, and also give it some volume. And just by doing this survey, I was able to see a specific need for this consumer group that gave me the direction I needed on the type of product to even to make even before I came up with any further ideas. All right, step three of seven, in case you were wondering, uh, this is testing your idea. So now that you've identified your consumer group and come up with an idea, the next step is to figure out if your idea is any good. So just because you like your idea doesn't mean that your consumers will like your idea. And even if they say they like the idea, 
you won't know for sure unless they actually go and buy the product. In our Cosmetic Launch Coach program, we actually give a number of ways to test an idea using websites, online advertising, and even collecting orders prior to developing the product. Now, I don't have enough time to go into that uh, here, but perhaps the best, most direct way to test your product idea is to go ask people. You know, follow up with people in your consumer niche and, and ask them whether they like your idea and how you might make it better. You could ask your friends and family, but if they're not in your consumer market, then I wouldn't put too much faith in what they have to tell you. Always let your consumer guide your decision about developing your product. Now, some of you might be worried that if you talk about your idea, someone's going to try to steal it. Well, this could happen. However, it's highly unlikely. Um, you should never let the fear that someone will steal your idea stop you from telling people about it and getting feedback. The feedback you get will be much more valuable than any risk that you take in someone stealing your ideas. And even if someone does hear your idea and they want to steal it, it's just not that easy. Product ideas are easy to come up with. You know, ideas are not the thing that makes you successful. You know, probably every product idea has already been thought of in the cosmetic industry. There are just so many different products and so many different ideas. It's not your product idea that is going to determine whether you're successful or not. It is your ability to turn that idea into an actual product that your consumer wants to buy. No one can steal your drive and motivation to get your product out on the market. Remember, execution of ideas is what makes success, not the ideas themselves. Now, there are a lot of duplicate ideas in the cosmetic industry. As long as you execute yours in a different way, you can carve out some success in the cosmetic industry. You know, there were other MP3 players on the market before Apple launched the iPod. And there were other makeup brands on the market before, say, Urban Decay launched their lines. The product idea is not nearly as important as the way that you execute this idea. Don't worry about someone stealing your idea. Focus on making your idea the best it possibly can be. All right, that brings us to step four, creating your product. All right, you have an idea. Um, you have an idea uh, what your product is and you have enough confidence that people wanna buy it, so congratulations. You can move on to the next stage and this is where you get actually get your product made. There are a lot of aspects of creating your product and it would be impossible to cover everything in this webinar, but here are a few things you gotta get done. Uh, just to make the product, you're gonna need a formula. These are the ingredients uh, to make your product. You'll need packaging. These, this is the container you put your product in. You're gonna want a label design. This is what goes outside of your product and it communicates with consumers about what your product is. Additionally, you're gonna need testing, the, the stuff to, that before you can sell your products, you have to run tests to prove that your products are safe. Uh, specifications, these are the range that you set to ensure that your product is reproducible. Uh, you'll need equipment. If you're making the product yourself, of course, you're gonna need mixers and heaters uh, and, and uh, hot plates and uh, all the other equipment that goes into making. And of course, you'll need raw material. Again, you'll need these if you're gonna make the product yourself. Now, ideally, you're gonna own your formulas and know all the components that go into mixing it. But this does lead to a question. Should you make the product yourself or should you hire someone else? If you're serious about uh, creating a successful cosmetic brand, I say you should hire someone to make the products for you. There is so much work that goes into making a brand successful that you don't want to spend your time actually making the product. Plus, you'll need the proper equipment. You'll have to uh, make sure you comply with all the appropriate regulations for producing cosmetics. You'll have to get the raw materials, packaging, and then actually have to make it. There's just way too much to do. You have to decide whether you are launching a beauty brand or you want to make products as a hobby. Is this a hobby you enjoy doing or do you really want to make a beauty brand? There are different types of people, uh, people who just really like to make the products or people who want to launch a beauty brand and uh, you know run a beauty brand business. You're going to have to decide who you are. And if you're a person that wants to start a beauty brand, then doing the beauty brand is much more important than creating the products. 
I say hire somebody. And in fact, you know, I when I uh, worked on on Feek, um, I I came up with the formulas, but I didn't make the products. I hired a contract manufacturer to do that. Now it can be a challenge to find a consultant chemist who to work with. And the reality is, uh, most of the people who contact uh, see the reality is most of the people who contact chemists. They only have a vague idea about what the product they want to produce, and they usually don't have much money. Seriously, if you're going to work with a cosmetic consultant, be prepared to pay at least $5,000 to get your product developed. And if you only have a few hundred dollars to spend, you aren't likely to find anyone or certainly anyone who is going to do a good job for you. Um, in our cosmetic launch coach uh, course, we do cover all the things you need to know in order to find a good cosmetic chemist or contract manufacturer and what you need to know when you're working with them. But one of the most important things that you can do even before you contact a contract manufacturer or a cosmetic chemist is find a product that is already on the market, which has the characteristics that you want to meet or hopefully exceed. One of the most common mistakes people make is to assume that their idea is completely unique and that there is nothing else out on the market like it. It's probably not true, but if it is true, it's probably not the idea you should be pursuing, as we said. It is much more difficult to create a product that one has, you know, that no one has any experience with. Consumers might say they want innovative products, but they buy products that are similar to the ones that are already on the market. The focus on making products that our people are going to buy. Find a product that is on the market and use it as a guide to develop your own product. Now, not only is this going to help you create your product uh, that customers are going to love, it's also going to make it easier for you to work with chemists and contract manufacturers to create the right product. This is a concept known as benchmarking, and it's something we go in depth and more in the course. But let me explain how I use it to develop my shampoo and conditioner line. When I was working, uh, when I was launching the Feek brand, I knew that I wasn't trying to compete with companies like P&G and Unilever. However, I also knew that many of my potential customers were fans of brands like Pantene or Tresemme or L'Oreal. They use these products. They expect a performance similar to these products. They have these expectations. So I had to meet or exceed the performance of those products that I was creating. Now, so in terms of benchmarking, I looked at what my potential customers said was important to them, like foam and fragrance, and of course, the feel of the hair after using. And I also took my own experience of evaluating products into consideration and combining those things, I was able to create a formula that my customers loved. I get great feedback on the products from customers who have, who have used it. When you're working on developing your product, you need to figure out what products your customers already like and then make something that works at least as well and, and hopefully a bit better. All right, now another important aspect of getting started, funding your project. Uh, finding customers and developing your idea um, and finding a benchmark, that doesn't actually cost too much. And these are things that you can do before you spend any money. I suggest that you do that before you spend money. But when you get to the point of getting your product made, you're going to have to spend some money. You might be wondering how much is that? Now, if you hire a contract manufacturer or a private label company to make your products, uh, you can keep your startup costs pretty low. The exact costs are going to depend on the type of product that you make and uh, uh, but you should figure it's going to run $2,000 to $3,000 for a minimum run of a single product. But this figure doesn't include the cost of creating your labels and any business startup costs like insurance, business fees, and marketing expenses. And realistically, I would say the least amount of money it will cost to get your new product idea started in, is around $5,000 in the United States. Uh, in other countries, this is going to uh, vary widely depending on regulations and things. In the United States, it's, it's uh, relatively inexpensive to do that. Now, in our cosmetic launch uh, program, we go through more detail about specific costs and ways to get your startup funding. But the main ways that people do this is through bootstrapping, which just means putting up your own money. So save money uh, and fund it all yourself. There are private loans, which means convincing friends and family to give you money. 
There's crowdsourcing, like raising money through uh, through places like Kickstarter. Uh, that can be a, a, a challenge. There are also pre-orders, and this is selling your product before you actually get it made. And this is actually pro uh, possible, and it's a way that a lot of beauty brands that start on social media, um, they get a social media following, they get some pre-orders, and then they use that money to fund the actual first orders. But so no matter how you get the money to get started, you need to understand that it will take money. If you don't have money to invest, uh, you're not gonna get your product line off the ground. Of course, there are still things you can do before you make your product that don't require a lot of capital. One of the most important things you can do is marketing. And that's what we're gonna cover next. As a chemist and a scientist, it troubles me to say that the most important part of launching your product line is your marketing story. No doubt you have, uh, you have to have a good product, no doubt about that. But unless you have a revolutionary product that is so obviously better than every other product out there, it will be your marketing, not your product, that determines whether you are successful or not. All you have to do is look at the recent success of uh, the Kardashian cosmetic line. She she sold out of her makeup kits line in like less than three hours. That's like fourteen million dollars in sales on the first day. I mean, that's just that's just crazy. And you know what else? There's absolutely nothing special about the technology that she used to create those beauty products. There's nothing special. It's the same makeup technology that everyone else has. But the biggest difference, the way that is the way that they are marketed. You know, Kim Kardashian has a huge fan base and she knows what they want and what they will buy, which is pretty much just anything she says. And <laughs> it's a nice power to have if you have it. Now to make your own successful product line, uh, your best strategy is to follow the same one that she did, uh, you know, First, be really rich and then get this far. No, just kidding. First, you have to identify your potential customers. She had her fan base, okay? There's your potential customers. Next, you wanna create a way to talk to them. Well, she had social media. You can do social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of, all of the Pinterest. Uh, next, you figure out what do they want. And Kim Kardashian kind of is the leader of her group. And so she knows what she wants. And since she's their leader, that's kind of what they're going to want. Uh, although she certainly communicates with her fans to see what really works for them. So finally, once you've figured out what they want, you just give that to them. Of course, your marketing is going to be a bit more difficult than Kim since she already has millions of fans whom she communicates with frequently. To launch your line, you have to start building a fan base or your niche base. Find customers in your niche, figure out what they want, and start giving that to them. Once they become your fan, this is your tribe, as marketing uh, guru Seth Godin would say, then you can start uh, selling them product. So how do you build this fan base? Well, the easiest way to do this is to start online, build a web presence. Uh, the key things you need to do to create a web presence and then a fan base is a brand name. You, you need to be able to call yourself something. So get a brand name, get a brand story. You know, what is your brand all about? Uh, get a social media presence. You can find people on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and, you, and then you just need to get people who are interesting, interested in following you. Having a website, this is an online real estate that you own. Here you can control the message, demonstrate your expertise to your fan base. And if you wanna launch your own line, it's great to have a website uh, for taking orders and explaining your brand. And then an email list. Building an email list is the best way to connect with your potential customers and it helps people and ultimately to get sales. Now the details of creating an online presence can be a little complicated, but you can find a lot of information about how to do this on the internet. Um, there are free services like WordPress and Blogger that allows you to create your own free websites. The social media sites are also free to use. There are significant limitations when you choose free options, but if you're just getting started developing your brand and you have no money, you can begin your online profile for next to nothing. The important thing is that you get started. You don't even need a product to start building your brand story online. 
But what you do need is a brand name, a brand story, and a good idea about who are your customers and what are the problems that they want solved. This is the approach that we took when we launched Feek. So here you can see the website we created for the Feek brand, and there's a link to it uh, down below. Uh, on the site, we have a description of what the brand is all about, a way to sign up for our newsletter. We have a we have blogs with the articles written about uh, that would be interested to our target market. And of course, the website is just one piece. We have accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. And since we're a new brand, we really haven't built these things up, but we will eventually have a large following to whom we can market our products to and then help our customers solve these problems. When you're creating your product line, one of the best things you can do before you even create the product is to create your brand and your online presence. Remember, this is free. In the Cosmetic Launch Coach, we go through in detail in how to set up your online presence, how to build your fan base and how to communicate them, and then ultimately how to use marketing to build your brand. All right, we got two steps to go. Step six is sales. No matter what reason you have for starting your online, you need to always remember that after your launch, your main focus needs to be on helping your customers and making sales. You can create the greatest product in the world, but without sales, you will fail. As a person who launches your own line, you become a salesperson for that line. Everything you do should be geared towards connecting with customers and making sales. Now, in the old days, it used to be the only way that you could make sales was to create a sales press kit, visit store buyers, and hope that you could convince someone to carry your line of products. If you didn't know a buyer at one of these stores, it was highly unlikely that you'd ever make any sales. But fortunately, things have changed. It is easier, it is more easier now than ever it has been to start your own line and start making sales. And that's because the old way of doing sales is only one of the many different ways you can make, you can do to make sales. Today, you can go through websites, through your own websites. You can go through stores like Amazon, through social media, through email marketing, and more. The key to having a successful product line is to find out what sales method works best for your particular audience. If you have a niche market, it's heavily influenced by social media, then that is where you should put your effort to make your sales. If your audience is on your email list, then focus on that. You might even start advertising to drive people to your website or your Amazon listings to make sales there. But the bottom line is that you need to combine your marketing efforts and your sales channels to get more customers to purchase your product. Now, we recently did a soft launch of the Feek brand. Since, uh, since we don't know uh, any buyers at stores, our strategy was to focus on online sales. We set up our website, created our social media accounts, and started creating content about the problems that our products solve. Since we did the early research to see what problems our customers were most concerned about, we knew the kind of content that we had to produce on the website. We wrote blog posts, sent emails, and did some social media posting. And this will be something that we continue to do in the future if we want to build the brand. Now, if, if we get to the point where we sell out our inventory, and we're not really interested in building the brand more, then things will go silent. But at the moment, that's kind of the plan. You know, in our first month of availability, we've already sold over $3,000 worth of product. Uh, and now, of course, that's not nearly as good as Kim Kardashian, but we certainly don't have her following either. And most important is that we got actual customers for our product, and now we communicate with them to figure out what they like about the products, what they didn't like, and what they want in the future. From now on, we no longer have to wonder what potential customers think of our products. We actually know what customers actually think. Incidentally, if you'd like to check out the Feet Shampoo and Conditioner products, you can go to the website link. Uh, it's listed on the side there and get 44% off, and that includes free shipping using that webinar code. Of course, 44 is my favorite number, so I try to incorporate that anywhere, so 44% off. Uh, this is really only for the uh, U.S. customers, though. Uh, we don't, at the moment, ship internationally. All right, step seven, last step. Uh, while you set up your sales and marketing systems, you'll need to set up a method for delivering your product or product distribution. Uh, now, a lot of people 
uh, start out by making the products themselves and then filling the orders themselves. This is probably going to be a little less expensive to do it that way. Unfortunately, there are hidden costs uh, and your time is certainly worth something. It does also limit your growth. Filling product orders might work for a while, but soon you're going to have too many sales to keep up. At least that's the plan. And this is not this is not going to work uh, for you to be. It, this is not a good work for you to be spending your time on. Your best bet is to pay someone else to do this kind of fulfillment work for you. There are a number of third, third party organizations uh, who can take your order information and fill products for you. The best of these is probably known uh, is Amazon or they're filled by Amazon program. The Amazon FBA works like this. You make your products, you ship them to Amazon, you list them on Amazon. And then someone then when someone orders your product through Amazon or your website, even the folks at Amazon box up the product and they ship it for you. Everything works automatically and you don't have to worry about filling out orders or taking uh, payments. It's it's a great thing to get off your plate because then you can focus on building your brand. And this is exactly what we did with Feek. Here is the listing for the shampoo. We have a listing for the conditioner. And of course, having Amazon fill our orders, uh, it does cost money. It cuts into your profit pretty significantly. They, they charge fees for everything. Uh, and so unless you have a, a good volume of sales, uh, filling it through Amazon is certainly not going to be the least expensive way to do this, you know. But anywhere where you can outsource things that lets you focus on uh, marketing, outsource things like production and distribution, you should outsource that as you as much as you can. All right. Before I get into answering some of the questions, and incidentally, if you have questions along the way, I hope you are putting those in there, and, uh, and we'll get to answering some of those. Um, I just, uh, I just want to summarize what we covered so far. If you want to launch your product line, there really are seven steps to getting that done. First, identify your customers and their problems. Next, uh, come up with ideas that solve those problems. Step three is to test your ideas with your customers. Then, and only then, do you create your product. After you create your product, then you can work on your marketing. You want to set up your online sales system, so a way for you to connect with people, take money, and then a distribution system, step seven, the way to fill your orders. If you follow these seven steps, uh, you are guaranteed to launch a product line. Now, then once you have your product line launched, you'll need to work more on marketing and sales to find more customers and make more products that solve the problems that they have. But like I said, follow those seven steps, you're guaranteed to launch your product line. So now that I've already armed you with the basic path uh, for going through your product line, the reality is that you could go do this right now. You can go through and find your customers, get information from them, get ideas, get your product made. And if there was something you don't know how to do, you can simply search the internet to get started. Of course, you can find a lot of information about launching your own product line by searching online, but that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It could take months to find this information and a lot of questions you might have that don't have easy answers on the Internet. To launch your product line and make it successful, you need someone, some cosmetic industry inside information that isn't always available. And if you're like most people, you'll become too frustrated to continue before you have a chance to be successful. So. I thought I would be great. You get all this information in one place, right? And so wouldn't it be great if we could connect with cosmetic insiders? And so what I did is I put together the cosmetic launch program. Uh, and the cosmetic launch program is an online training program that just takes you step by step through the entire process of starting and launching your own cosmetic beauty product line. Now, along the, along the way, you get information and resources that makes it easier for turn your product uh, idea into an actual product line. The uh, course has seven modules. We have a startup module that gets you started in setting up the business. Uh, we have a module on developing your idea and testing it. We have a module on product development, and this is actually creating from the idea to putting the product together. We have a module on funding. Uh, we have another one which goes through the production of products and the types of testing that you have to do. 
Then we have a module on sales and distribution, and we have a separate module on marketing and developing your online presence. There are bonus videos uh, which go through specific questions. Um, they walk you through some of the techniques specifically presented in the modules, and I'll show you exactly how I set up the beauty brand and got it launched following the, uh, the, the, uh, the lessons in the course. I went through the resources of getting it done. Essentially, I created this program. I just wrote down everything I was doing while I did it, and then I created this program from that. The Cosmetic Launch Coach is a great place to get your questions answered, and any question you have about product launch uh, or developing a product uh, is great. Now, if you were to hire a, a consultant to do this, uh, you know, consultants might charge four or five hundred dollars an hour. So, but if you have if you're in our program and you ask questions, uh, I'll I'll be happy to answer any kind of questions you you might have. Now, a lot of courses like this can go anywhere from fifteen hundred to two thousand uh, dollars, but um, and they usually have limited availability, they have an expiration, and they don't have direct content. But that's contact. That's not how we are in this. Uh, for the Cosmetic Launch Coach, I'm very accessible. Uh, if you join today, you get a free 30-minute phone conversation. We can talk about what you want to do, your brand, the products you want, and any kind of questions you have. Also, it's lifetime access. So once you join, you have access for lifetime. And if I do any sort of updates to the programs, you get all of that updates. Uh, there's any kind of future bonus material that's produced, you'll get access to that. And there's a money back guarantee. So if you start it, you're unhappy with it for whatever reason, no problem. Just let me know and I'll be happy to refund your money. If you use the coupon code on the side, you can get $100 off. So where it's regularly $5.99, you can get it for $4.99. All right. So if you're ready to get started with your beauty product line, Click on the link uh, on this video or go to the, the links uh, on the left side there. Use that coupon code and you can get started with the Cosmetic Launch Coach. Now, so that brings us to the end of the main webinar section. And uh, ah, there I am. Ah, I like to pretend I don't wear glasses. <laughs> All right. The next part here is I'm going to look and see what kind of questions you might have had. Uh, but first of all, thank you for joining. Uh, I hope you found the information helpful, useful, inspiring. Uh, if you want to join the, the Cosmetic Launch Coach program, I, I would love to have you. I'd love to help you learn more. But, uh, you know, if, if you just want to get out there and start uh, doing your product line, that's great, too. So let me see what kind of questions have come in, and uh, we'll get to answering some of those. Uh, okay, by my mark, we have... Uh, 25 questions. So let's see how, what do we have here? Um, here's a question from Murat. What is the first step in launching my business? Um, I, well, I, I went through a lot of that in the webinar, but I would say the first step is identify the customer that you want to serve. And if you, if you just say, well, I want to, sell to everybody, I want to make products for everybody, that's not identified well enough. Find a group of people that are not served by the current products out there. Find a group of people that you know, that you know something about or, or that you want to get to know something about. And that's, that's the place to start because that's the place where you're going to find the ideas. The, the worst thing you can do is to start just make a product and then not know who wants to buy it or who can it. So I'd say the first step in starting the business is to find a customer niche and figure out what products they want. There are some, you know, business stuff, you know, and, and that's going to depend on um, where you're located. But in the United States, I would say, you know, set up an LLC, come up with a business name. You can do all that stuff pretty quickly. That actually gets you started. But as far as the business kicking off, find your customers. Uh, here's a question from Chelsea. Uh, if I manufacture products myself in a small lab, how easy or challenging is it to get uh, ungated to sell cosmetics on amazon.com? Is it hard to get GMP certified? Um, Yes, doing it yourself is uh, challenging uh, to get certified. This is one of the reasons I went through a contract manufacturer is because the contract manufacturer had already got all that stuff worked out. 
And so it was really pretty easy for me to uh, get started with Amazon. I, uh, I found a, co a contract manufacturer who already was GMP certified and Amazon took the paperwork from them and we were ready to go. When you're creating the products yourself in a small lab, it's just uh, a lot more difficult. You know, there is a GMP certification process that you can go through, but I'm not recommending you do that. My recommendation, if you want to start selling on Amazon, is to uh, to go with a contract manufacturer that already has that done. It's just just much more easy. Um, Christy says, "Do you know of a reasonably priced filling machine for a, a home lab?" Uh, actually, in our forum, if you go to chemistcorner.com slash forum, uh, there there was a discussion about filling machines, but it's it's probably a hand filling machine. You know, it depends on the products that you are. It, that is one of the challenges when you're making stuff at home, finding a way to fill it. Some some people have some creative ways of filling, like a, a, a cake baster for some creams. Uh, you can fill it with other bottles and transferring. There are some tricks to do it, but getting a... a a filling machine at home, uh, check out that discussion in our forum. Uh, Zoe says, uh, where do you go to find a reputable call cosmetic manufacturing factories in the US? South Korea and Germany, where should one start looking? Uh, so what you wanna do is to go to, well, on Chemist Corner that we have a discussion in our forum specifically about uh, uh, cosmetic chemists and consultants, and those can help you. But uh, if you go to SCC online, there are some contract manufacturers listed there. If you go to the happy, H-A-P-P-I dot com, the happy buyer's guide, you can find contract manufacturers there also. So, um, but the reality is it's, it's, it's hard to find good ones because, uh, if you understand it from the contract manufacturer standpoint, they want to work with big companies who are going to be repeat customers. Uh, but there are a lot of people starting out who who will just make one batch and then never go back to them again. And so that kind of business for them, they're going to make that expensive uh, and they're going to, you know, sometimes not be uh, the greatest people to work with because they don't really want your business because you're not, big enough, but uh, once you get big enough, then they want your business. So it's, it is a, it is quite a challenge. Um, Cherry asks, what is the range of cost of owning a formula if a cosmetic chemist is formulating? Uh, you know, it, it could say, f yeah, it ranges from $5,000 to $25,000. It really depends. I would say that, uh, you know, twenty five thousand or even fifteen thousand is is as you suggested. That's uh, that's a pretty high. Um, so if if you're doing five thousand uh, dollars, you could find somebody to create a formula for five thousand dollars and have uh, you know stability testing and packaging. But you know, it all is going to depend on who you're working with. Uh, but those are reasonable numbers. Uh, but you know, some people will charge. 15,000. So you just have to find someone. Um, but when I said $5,000, that is, that is my, that is just a, a rough guess of what it would cost in the United States. It, it could cost more than that. It probably won't cost less than that. All right. Nikki asked, uh, I'm having an issue with determining what the price unit for my SKU should be with the manufacturer. I'm currently working on developing color cosmetics. How do you determine the price per unit? For the products when working with a contract manufacturer well the the price of your products first you want to figure out how much does it cost to make these things so and the cost of making it includes the cost of the raw materials it includes the cost of the batching time the compounding the creating the product it includes the cost of filling uh the packaging is off also usually in that cost too uh, so once you figure out like what's the cost of a run, say you do a run of 10,000 units and then you divide that by how much uh, how much it costs to run that 10,000 units. So to give you an example, I ran um, the first production run that I did of Feek uh, was I did a, a, a production run of 5,000 units. OK, to do that 5,000 units, 
that cost me $15,000. So I had to pay the contract manufacturer $15,000 and they made 5,000 units for me. So just quickly doing the math. Now that included packaging and, you know, testing, stability testing, that kind of thing. Uh, but just doing the math there, that was $3 a bottle. So just the bottle, just for me to break even cost $3, but that's not everything. Well, I have my business expenses, like my, uh, uh, you know, coming up with my marketing materials and, and my uh, label design and uh, also my business insurance. So there were a, there were a number of business expenses that would add to the cost of that unit. Um, additionally, a thing to consider is that you have shipping costs. So if you're going to uh, fulfill an order, now you could charge the, the customer uh, for shipping, but just to send out a bottle, two bottles of shampoo, for example, that's going to cost anywhere from five dollars to ten dollars uh, if I'm shipping in the United States. So you you also want to include some of the shipping costs in that unit. So if my five thousand, if my three dollar unit of a, a shampoo, this this bottle here costs three dollars to make, which includes the bottle, the filling, the ingredients inside. Um, but it's cost me another $5 to ship. So just to break even, I would have to charge $8 for this unit. Um, so if if I charge, say I charge $10, then I'm making $2 a bottle. So if I made a, a, a run of 5,000 units, I charge, I'm making a profit of $2 a bottle. The most I can make is say $10,000. And I've got to sell 5,000 units. Uh, so. The, that can be a challenge now if if now the big guys are, are making millions of bottles and they can, you know, make, uh, you know, 10 cents or 50 cents a profit. But you as someone's first starting out, uh, you're not going to survive in business if you can only make two dollars a unit, but you're charging still charging, you know, twelve dollars to make two dollars. It's a, it's a challenge. Uh, I hope I hope that helped. <laughs> um, Here's a question from Nikki. I'm having an issue with the term. Uh, actually, we just did that question. I hope that helped Nikki. All right, next question from Andrea. You have indicated that building a fan base and more significantly a web presence can begin before you have the product launch. Isn't there a risk of your brand name being stolen while you develop your product? Uh, well, first of all, yes, there is that chance of being stolen. And there's also a chance of it being stolen if you don't do that, right? Somebody could today just come up with your product name and you don't even know it. If you're worried about, uh, specifically about a brand name, if you're worried about the name, uh, you can file a USPTO. So go to the United States Patent and Trade Office. You could file a trademark on that brand. In fact, I did do a trademark on Feek. To do a trademark costs about $250 in the United States. I don't know overseas, UK, uh, in Europe, I don't know what the rules are there, but certainly they have trademarking there. So if you're worried about somebody stealing your brand name, uh, it, you should trademark it. Uh, one of the things you do though, when you're coming up with your brand name, when you're coming up with a name, uh, look at look at uh, Twitter, look at Instagram, and look for what... what uh, what handles are available? What brand names are available? Because that you want to get that brand name, and then squat on that, squat on that, uh, that name. Get that name, register that name to you, and then you go to the USPTO. You register it for a trademark, and in that way, people aren't going to be easily able to steal your name. So, if that's what you're worried about, you can you can do some stuff about it. It will cost something. Here's a, a question uh, from Botswana. Do you have formulation courses that are real court classroom courses? Uh, I do, but only here in the United States uh, and usually in New Jersey and only once a year. Most of the stuff that I do is online. Here's a question from Stella. Uh, I'll answer a few more questions, uh, but if I, don't, if I don't get to your question, I'll answer it via email. If you still have questions, feel free to post them there. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I'll answer everything that I can. But if you've joined the webinar, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining. We're going to have another webinar next month on a different topic. If you have ideas for webinar topics, feel free to send them to me, and I, I'll be happy to, uh, to do them if I have that expertise. 
But thank you to everybody who joined, and I'm going to keep on answering questions. But if you have to go, uh, I'll see you later. Okay, uh, here's a question from Stella. My question is, how uh, how about lab testing for skincare products? Does this step come after manufacturing the product? Would I hire Micro Lab to do that? Uh, so. Great question. Uh, you don't want to do testing of your products after manufacturing because you can imagine you make this big batch of skin product and you've, you've, you paid for it and then you have the test and there's something goes wrong with the test. Well, now you got to toss it out. So really what you want to do is make laboratory prototypes, do your testing on those lab prototypes, those, uh, those smaller ones and then see if it if it passes. And if it passes through that, then you can feel good about doing, you know, manufacturing a larger batch and making sure that it passes testing. Uh, yes, I would recommend hiring a lab to do this kind of testing for you, safety testing. This isn't the kind of uh, stuff that you can necessarily do yourself. Uh, microbe testing, for example, requires, uh, you know, agar plates and uh, a warm hood and time. And it's just, it's just, better to hire somebody because it's going to cost you more money to invest in creating the test equipment than it will be to hire somebody to run the test for you. Okay, uh, we get a few more questions here. Here's a question from Severine. Uh, she's provided me with a uh, uh, ingredient list. How much would it cost a hair refresher or curl cream of 100 mil each, minimalist packaging? And for instance, this basic, but uh, just eyeballing it. So my, just based on my experience and things to create, uh, to create a product like you said, it probably costs you about the same as something like this. Now this was, this cost me, uh, the, the chemicals inside cost three dollars uh, say three dollars a unit and then the filling so it was probably five dollars a unit you could if you're going to now this is 237 mils if you're going 100 mils maybe you could cut that price down to say three dollars a unit for something like that so that would be my guess you could probably find a cosmetic chemist who could make it for around around that line Chelsea says, is there always a $3,000 cosmetics uh, ungating fee to sell on Amazon now? Uh, when I got on Amazon, there was not a $3,000 cosmetics ungating fee. That might be a new thing. Uh, one of the things that uh, Amazon does do is uh, if, say, you do that filled by Amazon system that I talked about. Uh, in fact, we shipped a whole pallet of stuff to Amazon. They, in addition to, they, they charge you to fill the orders. They charge you a an Amazon selling fee. So, because what happens is if somebody on a website clicks on their website, it gets to Amazon, they make a sale. Amazon gives them an affiliate commission. That commission comes right out of your bottom line. So Amazon has a ton of fees, but they have an additional fee. It's a product storage fee. So if you have products stored at Amazon, they're charging you, uh, you know, 50 bucks a month just for the storage fees. So, uh, Amazon does uh, does charge a significant amount of money to get on there, uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if there is that that ungating fee. Uh, but if you can demonstrate sales through your own website, uh, you can probably work with Amazon to get that lower. Tanya asks, which contract manufacturer do you recommend? Uh, I, it depends on where you are, uh, but the, the reality is um, I don't specifically recommend uh, any uh, contract manufacturers unless I've worked with them. So there's only a few that I've specifically worked with, uh, but it really depends on where you're located. So you can uh, give me more information. Uh, we can, I can give you some other recommendations. Um, Yvonne says, do you have relationships with cosmetic private label companies and cosmetic manufacturers? Uh, I know where to point you to, uh, but I don't necessarily say you should go work with these people. Um, the reality is working with anybody. I don't, I don't like to recommend working with contract manufacturers or private labelers because um, they're everybody the, the quality of how the work goes is really dependent on the project 
on how busy the contract manufacturer is at the time and what other uh, what other minimums and that kind of things. And to really to really know, I can point you in the direction to go talk to some people, but it's really up to you about whether they are somebody that you want to work with uh, because there are everybody has their limitations. Uh, Paolo says, if we have a low budget, do you suggest us to sell products only online to, or to sell them at different channels? Well, selling products online is uh, the, a great way to do it. You, could, you don't need anyone else. You could have a website, uh, you could get the orders, and then you could take your product, put it in boxes, and send it to uh, the address. And you could do that all self-contained. So that's a great way to do it. Uh, it's a kind of a slower way to do it if you're not getting a lot of website or if you don't have a big audience. You can also sell products uh, if you go to like farmers markets or uh, you know weekend fairs. You could start selling products in that way, and and in that way you could sell a lot more products in a single day, perhaps. But if you if you actually work with driving traffic to your website and you set up a good system for selling. Uh, you really can just do things online and the different channels that you want to choose is really going to depend on who your customer is. Where are they? What do they like to buy? If your customer are, you know, people from 65 to 70 years old who never go on websites, then it would be a terrible idea to just sell online. You got to go sell where your customers are. Uh, Gerard Pitchworks says... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I would like to listen again to fully absorb the information. I sort of remember you keep these seminars for a while, so where will it be? Uh, Gerard, great question. Uh, there will be a replay of this, and it'll be up for a, a week and a half, two weeks. Uh, so you're going to get an email after this, which uh, says, hey, uh, here's here's the webinar and how to play it. Okay. Um, Tom says, ICMAD is also a great uh, site. So ICMAD, that's to find uh, contract manufacturers. Go to ICMAD.com. Thanks for that, Tom. Uh, Abby says, what's the charge of lab that will ensure that the preservative and cosmetics are effective while not irritating? Uh, what you want to do there to for preservative testing, uh, you can find a, a, a quality control lab. There's one microchem. Uh, it, it was a lab that uh, used to advertise on Chemist Corner, but they they uh, spe specifically work in testing microbial uh, uh, testing the microbial systems of your cosmetics. And so uh, you can hire hire a lab like that to do stability testing, do safety testing. So uh, that would be my suggestion there. Khalil says, uh, how does product packaging get sanitized before the products are made by the contract manufacturer? Is this a service that is included in contract manufacturing? Well, typically when you buy product, when you buy packaging from a, a packager, package creator, uh, the, the packaging is already sanitized when it gets to you. And so the contract manufacturer, this isn't, this isn't an extra service that you have to worry about. Uh, sanitizing your packaging is really a thing that the uh, the packaging companies they worry about that they they sell you sanitized packaging. Um, it this only becomes an issue when you're like a homemaker, you make stuff at home, uh, then you want to make sure that your 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 packaging is already uh, uh, free of any microbial contamination. And so that but. Contract manufacturers don't really worry about that. Tasha says, can we replay this later? Yes, you can replay it later. Uh, Anne says, what if you import materials from, say, Africa? Would you recommend this? Uh, if you have good quality control and you test them and the uh, materials are good, then, yeah, that's that's fine if the price is right. Uh, but you just have to have good, uh, good operating procedures, good testing to make sure that's, uh, uh, going to be safe. Uh, Tarsia says, uh, do you work with natural products like carrier oils in formulations? Uh, yeah, sure. It depends on the formula, but, uh, uh, yes, uh, we, you can work with, uh, carrier oils, uh, carrier oils are 
really, you know, coconut oil, jojoba oil, soybean oil. Yeah, oils are used uh, in that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the question. Uh, Serge says, to sell cosmetic products as a manufacturer, Amazon requires some documents, FDA registration, good manufacturing practices, certificate of analysis, and pre-market notification. How do you get these documentations? Uh, well, that's why I work with a contract manufacturer. You work with a contract manufacturer and they, you work with somebody who's worked with uh, Amazon and they'll have that information available to you. Now you can chase down how to get this registration uh, and it's going to require inspectors and having a, a, your, your place inspected through the FDA. Uh, but it was just much more easy to hire a contract manufacturer to, to get this done for you. Um, and, or I work with a cosmetic chemist uh, specifically to help get you this stuff done. Remember that when you're launching your line, you want to focus mostly on marketing, connecting with your consumers and all of this other stuff, outsource it, uh, get, hire somebody to do that for you because this stuff is not going to make your product successful. It's the marketing stuff and the story building that's going to make it successful. Uh, this stuff is important and it has to get done. It has to get done right, which is why you should uh, work with somebody who has a system for doing that and can get that done for you. Chelsea says, is there a list of uh, grass ingredients? Uh, if we would like to use an ingredient like a plant-based extract, not on the grass list, what is the process for for that, or do we just do it? Uh, well, as far as creating uh, cosmetic products, um, um, the, the grass list, so generally regarded as safe in the United States, the FDA has a, a list of those things, but generally uh, that's, that's for uh, food products. Uh, for cosmetic products, uh, what you wanna do is if you have an ingredient, you can go to the CIR to see the safety testing uh, available on that. And, and work with that. Now, if you're talking about, say, I'm gonna go in my backyard and get a plant and chop it up and <laughs> macerate it and then put it in my formulas, uh, you're gonna have to prove the safety of your final formula there. So even if you do that, you have to prove that uh, your preservative system is ensuring that it's uh, not gonna be microbial contaminated. So you have to do stability testing. So there is a process to do that. The bottom line is, it is illegal to sell unsafe products, so you have to be able to prove that your product is safe. And just getting a you know a plant from outside and putting in your product, that's not enough to prove that your products are safe. There's plenty of natural ingredients out there that are not safe. All right, uh, I just have a few more questions here. If I don't get to your question, uh, uh, then uh, I'll I'll answer you via email. Uh, Zoe says, is it common for contract manufacturers to copy your formulations with some very minor changes to make for their other customers? Uh, I don't know if it's common, but it certainly can happen. Um, so, so yeah, I, but, but, but the thing about it is if, if I, I hope the message of the entire webinar was this, uh, the formula is not the most important thing. The most important thing is the marketing story and the consumer's problems, the consumer needs. If somebody takes your exact formula and they put it in their bottle and they're selling it, consumers aren't going to say, oh, those are exactly the same. They, they, they don't know what, they, they look at the products and they see the story to that. Uh, um, and that's what's important. You, you really can't get hung up, too hung up on whether someone's gonna take your formula or not. And you also have to look at it from the contract manufacturer standpoints. Uh, they have their own house formulas that they want to work with because they get they buy raw materials in bulk. Uh, and if you have some special raw material from a supplier that they don't use, they don't really want to create that formula. They've already got formulas. They don't really need to take yours. But even if they do take your formulas and tweak it, um, that in and of itself is not a bad thing for you. Um, in fact, it might help to reduce the cost of making your formulas because now they can bulk buy that. Now, that would be a pretty crappy thing to do. And I wouldn't say work with a contract manufacturer to do that. I just say, don't worry too much about it. Focus on marketing. 
Um, Chelsea asks, can Amazon refrigerate products for a fee? Of course, uh, I, I have not looked into it, so I do not know whether they do that. Uh, they may do it for a fee, but I, you can, I can tell you it's probably not going to be cheap, knowing Amazon. <laughs> uh fathana says why why cosmetics uh does not label allergy warning as compared to food packaging it would be much easier to consumer for if, who's allergic to things that causing a break so why uh, well uh so the question is why don't cosmetics have to label allergies uh there's nothing about co the cosmetic rules that say you can't label uh, allergens and in fact in the EU, it is a requirement to put on the list of ingredients. Uh, there's 26 known allergens that are typically found in natural ingredients or fragrances. And so you have to list those on your list of ingredients. But if your if your customer is uh, uh, a group that has allergens or allergic to things, it would make sense to put right on your label that, uh, you know, um, if, you, if you're including a, an allergen in your formula, it makes sense to, to warn people about that if that's a concern. But the, the, the reason why there isn't that requirement on cosmetics, uh, it's just the law doesn't say to do that. And the, the incidence of allergens is pretty low in the United States. Uh, the worst ones are, affect maybe 4% of people. But, you know, at some point, everyone's going to be allergic to something. So your entire package could be, you know, allergen, allergen, allergen. So that's why we put it on, the, the onus is on the person to know what they're allergic to, look in the list of ingredients to see if that allergen is there and avoid it. Uh, okay. Uh, we just got a, a question. Uh, Tanya says, why is it impossible to minimize the thio smell in perms? It's because the ingredient, uh, that makes the perm works as the ingredient that breaks the sulfur sulfur bond, uh, is it's the thing that creates that odor. And so you can't, it, you can't create the product without having that odor. And so that's what makes it very difficult to cover. All right, we just got a couple of more questions and I'm going to finish up here. Uh, Chelsea says, is there a USA government site that lists ingredients allowed or not allowed in products? Yes, if you go to fda.gov slash cosmetics, you can learn about uh, some banned ingredients. Now in the United States, there's only uh, 11 or 12 specifically banned ingredients. Uh, if you go to the CIR, so CIR dot safety dot org or dash safety dot org uh that'll you can look up any ingredient there and that'll tell you the safety testing that's been done on it and it'll give you the recommended levels uh, of use but there is no there is not a lot of thing that says uh this is not allowed now if you're if you're formulated in the eu they specifically do have uh some lists of ingredients and what you what is allowed what preservatives you can use uh, also, I should say in the United States, there is a list of colorants that are allowed and not allowed. So if it's not on the allowed colorant list, then you can't use it as a colorant. Um, how do I know if I can include a plant ingredient for a new or unlisted plant or ingredient? Um, like I said, as long as you can prove your product is safe, uh, you can include you know, anything you want except the 11 banned ingredients with the FDA. If you're selling in the United States, um, but you have to be able to prove that your product is 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 safe. And if you're using an ingredient, uh, a new plant, well, then you have to do safety testing, you have to do patch testing. Of, you'll have to do, you know, there is some animal testing that you might have to do if you're using an ingredient that is completely unique and new. And this is one of the reasons that we don't find a lot of new cosmetic raw materials, or at least ones that are really unique because nobody wants to do animal testing to prove the safety. Uh, okay, this will be my last question. And uh, thank you again so much for attending. If you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to send me an email, perry.romanowski at gmail.com, or just post it below and I'll, I'll get to these questions after this webinar. But thanks again so much for participating. Here is the last question I'll do. Uh, this is from Yvonne. Um, what's your opinion on using private label companies in China? Do you have any contacts in China? Uh, 
no, uh, no, I don't have any contacts in China that I would recommend. Uh, though there are, uh, uh, I've been to a couple of trade shows in China. Uh, but as far as my opinion of using companies in China, um, if you can, if you can be sure of the quality of the product, and you're going to have to do your own certificate of analysis of the products that come over, uh, then there shouldn't be a problem. I personally would stick with using United States manufacturers. I don't think the cost savings that you get uh, from working with China is worth the risk of uh, having uh, uh, less control over the quality of your products. Uh, that's that's my opinion. Um, I just don't think it's when you're creating when you're creating your brand. Uh, the, like I said, the most important thing to me is the marketing piece. So if it costs you, say, five dollars a unit or it costs you three dollars a unit, that two dollars to me, uh, um, if you're if you're starting a new brand and you have lots of sales, that's when that two dollars matters. But if you're just starting out, uh, you could just price your product two dollars more and to cover that difference and it's it's only afterwards i would say establish yourself first and then find ways to cost save your product but don't worry so much up front about the how much it costs to create your product you're not going to win the pricing game all right that brings me to the end of this webinar thank you so much for joining i am perry romanowski and i will see you next time if you have any questions feel free to uh send me an email or post it below uh but thanks again